Hi, and welcome to Introduction to Capital Markets. My name is Neon Park, and I'm a manager of the Capital Markets and Securities Analyst Program here at CFI. On behalf of CFI, I'm so excited to be bringing you this course, introducing you to the world of capital markets. In this course, you will develop a clear, meaningful, and practical understanding of capital markets, as well as a diverse stream of careers within it. Finance is a vast and nuanced industry, and at CFI, we aim to give you exactly what you need and nothing you do not. Through this course and the broader CMSA program, we have created a thoughtfully curated curriculum of courses to help you navigate what can be an overwhelming amount of information. Our goal with the CMSA program is to serve you the information you need, empowering you to make well-informed career decisions in real time when it matters. So let's get started on our journey to make Foresight 2020. Let's start by taking in our course objectives. In other words, our learning roadmap. We will start with an introduction to the topic of capital markets by defining stakeholders, participants, and introducing key terminology. These fundamental building blocks of knowledge will help bring into focus the framework of capital markets. After we build our foundational knowledge, we will explore career paths by taking a compartmentalized approach to learning, exploring career paths on the sell side, and then buy side. By the end of this course, you will not only gain a strong appreciation of the most sought-after career path in capital markets, but also an understanding of where you and your skill set may find the best fit to be set up for success. With that said, let's dive right in. Defining Capital Markets In capital markets, there are two distinct markets, one where new issue securities are born, and another where existing securities are traded. These two markets are called the primary and secondary markets, respectively. Primary markets are where large corporations go to raise money in large sums from public markets. In exchange for money, these corporations issue debt or equity securities to mostly institutional investors. And here are two notes to keep in mind. When issuing debt, a corporation is effectively borrowing money, while when raising equity, the corporation is selling interest in the company. And throughout this course, I'm going to be using the words institutional investors synonymously with portfolio managers. Now, secondary markets are where institutional investors, essentially fund and portfolio managers alike, go to buy and trade existing securities. The products traded in these two worlds is broad, from common shares and bonds to currencies, commodities, and derivatives. There is a product for every need. These are only some of the products, though, and they are further explored in a variety of our CMSA courses. So for now, let's take a closer look at primary markets. The primary market, often called the new issue market, is where new securities are issued. These securities are said to come to market, and it is a one-time event. Let's take a visual learning approach and draw out the set of interactions that defines primary markets. First, in theory, the process is initiated by a corporation that needs large amounts of capital for general corporate purposes. In practice, however, investment banks are constantly maintaining their line of communication with corporations, being proactive and not reactive, pitching financing ideas so that they can get ahead of their competition. Now, because corporations are experts in their industry line of work and not in the business of rallying investors, they use a financial intermediary to access investors looking to lend money. This financial intermediary is called an investment bank, and the team that facilitates new issue securities is called the investment bank's origination group. As the new securities are originated, they are purchased by institutional investors in the primary market. So let's go through an example to make this process feel more tangible. Let's say, Amazon requires capital to purchase a new software development company. Amazon's current CEO and or treasurer would reach out to its choice of investment bank, say Goldman Sachs. At Goldman, there is a team dedicated to managing relationships with companies like Amazon, as well as its industry peers. This team is called an industry group coverage team, and they will conduct thorough research and analysis to recommend whether Amazon would be best served by issuing debt or equity. Then, depending on the recommendation, Goldman's industry group coverage team 
would connect with their internal peers in origination, debt capital markets for debt products, and equity capital markets for equity products. The origination team then helps Amazon meet their financing needs by executing a new issue and finding global investors to buy Amazon's bonds or shares. Now moving on to secondary markets. Secondary markets are often just referred to as secondaries, and it is where any trading activity after a new issue takes place. In other words, this is where buy-side fund managers sell to and buy from each other. The corporation that issued the original security is not involved. In order to execute these trades, fund managers will make use of an investment bank's sales and trading departments or make use of electronic trading via over-the-counter platforms. Diagrammatically, you'll see that our interactions are bookended by the same parties as the interaction starts and finishes with buy-side investors. Now that we have looked at primary and secondary markets individually, let's look at both markets together, comparing and contrasting the key characteristics of each market. Let's start with definition. The defining feature of primary markets is that it is the first time offering of a security, a new issue. By contrast, in secondary markets, only existing securities are offered. This leads us to think about the beneficiary of proceeds. The key beneficiary in primary markets is the corporation raising funds. In secondary markets, however, the beneficiaries are the two investors making a trade, existing security for existing security. Taking those two concepts together, we see that the transaction stakeholders in primary markets are 1. the issuing corporation, 2. the investment bank's origination team, and 3. the institutional investors that are going to buy the new issue and give the corporation money. In secondary markets, we see that the corporation is taken out of the equation, and it is just the investors that buy and sell amongst each other, placing their trades through broker-dealers which we will discuss is effectively an investment bank's sales and trading team. That said, we see that the financial intermediary involved in primary markets is the investment bank's origination group, whereas in secondary markets, it is the investment bank's sales and trading team. Now, the products traded in primary markets are newly issued securities, like initial public offerings of common shares and bonds, as well as follow-on issues. In secondary markets, it's just existing securities changing ownership. To follow up on products traded, the selling frequency of securities in primary markets is a one-time event. A new issue can only happen once, and any resale thereafter is a secondary purchase, in essence, not from the issuer. By contrast, the selling frequency in secondaries is limitless, as trades are ongoing amongst investors. Last but not least, the price. The price of new securities is fixed as the deal is priced at issue. The price in secondaries, on the other hand, is constantly moving as supply and demand, as well as a variety of other exogenous and endogenous factors, impact price movements. To this point, we have discussed primary and secondary markets individually and together to have a clear understanding of their individual characteristics as well as what they have in common and how they differ. Now, we are going to examine the participants in those markets. For both primary and secondary markets to function, there are key financial institutions that make the market operationally viable. Like yourself and many other aspiring finance professionals, these are the institutions where individuals seeking careers in capital markets go. Capital markets institutions are grouped into the buy side and the sell side, and these names come from their core function in capital markets. Sell side firms, their core function is to sell securities in both the primary new issue market as well as support buying and selling to provide liquidity of those said securities in secondary markets. Now buy side firms, on the other hand, fulfill their function by buying securities in both primary new issue markets as well as secondary markets in order to fulfill their investment mandates. We will go into further details as we explore both sides and the respective groups that are within them. But before we go into the details, 
Join me as we draw one more diagram to bring together all of our previous discussions in this chapter. Over the course of the next four chapters, we are going to look at two career paths on the sell side and two career paths on the buy side. On the sell side, we will examine origination in primary markets, followed by sales, trading, and research in secondary markets. Next, we will move over to the buy side and examine career paths in investment management from two perspectives, traditional and non-traditional. For each section, we will explain the function as well as structure of the group and follow this up with a peek at a day in the life to help you gauge your personal fit to roles in that area.